What's up, fight fans? Welcome to another edition of Split Decision MMA, your weekly MMA podcast, brought to you by My MMA News. My MMA News, uh, Dependable Solutions, uh, Walkie Craft. Walkie Craft. I haven't um, said that one in a while. Haven't said it in a while. Kevin, and, we need you down here. Yeah, coming from SinCal Industries. Yeah. In this beautiful town in Modesto, California. The 209? Yeah. What? 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 You can get here by the Highway 5 or the 99. <laughs> or the 99. I like or that. the 99. <laughs> <laughs> Your weekly podcast breaking down all the news that is mixed martial arts, all the rumors, all the stories we hear. Uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to talk about a lot of things today. A lot, of, a lot of news going on, a lot of stories going on. And then, of course, we will recap the fights that happened, preview a bunch of fights this weekend. Like a shit ton of fights. Yeah. Well, we got to go. We got to review a decent amount of fights, yeah, too. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff going on. And we're so, getting into that. Was this an MMA season? It's MMA season. I got, yeah. yeah. I'll go with that. It's definitely MMA season. We got a lot of stuff starting. A lot of stuff starting. Uh, let's start off with the first story. We talked about this last week. Uh, we talked about how Rodrigo de Lima passed away. He was hit by an Uber driver in Brazil. Uh, they caught the guy. He's been arrested and charged with murder. He also was arrested and he confessed to the murder. Okay. He says flat out that um, he basically, they were getting, he tossed him out of the car, you know what I mean? Uh, because they told him, I guess, he said that he told the people in the car to bring the tone of their voices down and they got <laughs> mad at him. And so they got out of the car after he, and then he, you know, he kicked him out and they got out of the cut, car. Why don't you cut it down back there? Why don't you go, calm down. Calm <laughs> I don't down. know about you, but I mean, I've been I'll in a, come lot back of, there. a lot of Uber drivers. I mean, do you act like they're like not there? Do you talk to them? Do you like what? what what's your? You know me. I chat everybody. Yeah, out, bro. You, are you like one of those people that I'm likes just, to chat with the Uber driver? I can't be left alone with my own thoughts, so I gotta <laughs> I gotta talk no matter where I'm at. What if they're not talking back? Do you feel awkward? I just keep talking. You just keep going anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I, I never. I don't like awkward silences. All right. All right. Well, uh, this guy didn't like the voices that were going on. He kicked <laughs> him out of the Uber, and then he says he came back to try and quote unquote scare the fighter. And hit him with his car. <laughs> what up, Kowal, Carmichael? Hit him with the Owens. car. Owens, what's happening? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that guy's been arrested, so uh, he's definitely not, not going to be having a good day. I don't want to get, yeah. I'm glad we're not even going to say his name, POS. <laughs> it was long. It was like Why don't you five, just, you know what I mean? Names long. You did what you wanted to do. You should have stuck around. I wonder if he was shopping for an attorney. <laughs> it's in Brazil, right? Yeah, it's in he's Brazil. He's dead. <laughs> He's dead. Uh, Darren Till back on social media. After last week, we talked about how he got off social media. He's back on posting this weird sweaty video. Like, dude, look at it. The yeah. whole time, all he sat there was breathing. Bad. It's like he's just sweating after a workout. And he's just coming. like, and then the, the little thing at the bottom's like, fuck what you know. <laughs> or fuck what you think. Excuse me. Fuck what you think. With a taxi emoji. Yeah. Well, that, that's basically to his... Uh... His press guy, he's like, I'm back on social media. I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm doing what I want. <laughs> Do you think this is a good look for uh, for Darren Tilt? Uh, not necessarily the sweatiness, but coming back on social media. <laughs> you might as well. I mean, it's not like he got in a Bigfoot truck and ran over other people's cars. He just stole an Uber. What if Rampage had social media? I wasn't going to say his name. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to throw somebody under the bus or under a Bigfoot truck. But yeah, but when your Bigfoot truck has your picture on the side of it. <laughs> and your name. And your name. It's a lot more difficult than just trying to anonymously steal a taxi. Right. <laughs> Would have been cool as if he picked somebody up. <laughs> we're going to Mexico. Have you boys like Mexico? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, we're in England. I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> I can do it. I can do it. This thing turns into a U-boat. <laughs> Uh, Paulo Costa, this happened last week while we were doing the show. Paulo Costa has received his sanction from USADA. On the level, I tried to get it in the show. Yeah, it was a little late. Brandon didn't think it was legit. No, I didn't say I didn't think it was legit. I think we needed a little more <laughs> to talk about other than, well, he accepted his sanctioning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Paulo and, Costa, we're, and we're in an argument. He's saying he got busted. <laughs> I'm saying there was a negotiation, and he took the IV. Six months suspension for, from Musada because illegal IV use. He took, yeah, he he uh, received an IV of more than 100 milliliters during his 12-hour period of making weight, which is against the rules. He did the same thing after he made weight at two. This is UFC 212 and 217 when he fought. Um, so he's being charged with being testing positive any for plasticides. Ther therapeutic use exemption for the IVs. So right. yes, right. which. Same thing, giving him sane solution or his stomach medication. Either way. You think if you got acupuncture, it would show up too? No, they're not plastic needles, are they? I don't know. I think they're metal needles. 
Really? Yeah. Dude, the ones they stuck in me, they were kind of wavy. Well, yeah, they're not big needles. They're just kind of, they have the little flags okay. on the end, right? All right. It's supposed to be, in, yeah. So anyway, so he uh, <laughs> says, Paul Costa's use of pro- prohibited method on June 2nd, 2017, also falls under the jurisdiction of uh, CABA, CAB, CAB MMA, the Comissario Atletica Brasilia de MMA, <laughs> which is recognized USADA as sanctioning and will additionally fine him $4,000, all of which will go to his opponent's. Uh, in addition, the New York, New York State Athletic Commission has also resolved his case from the two, November 3rd. IV so it goes incident. back to the guy that he fought? Yeah. Oh, how cool. You just get a check out of nowhere. <laughs> Neither That's commission awesome. is going to impose any additional sanctioning other than the fines. Um, so, yeah, he's still trying to get his fight out with Yo Romero. However, he's currently suspended. Although, like you said, it's retrograded, so it shouldn't be ready by now. Right. Yeah. I, I think that's how it works out. I mean, but excuse, let's go back real quick. Does this guy look like he uses <coughs> IVs? Does he look like he needs to? <laughs> huh? There's natural physiques out there. <laughs> All right. Moving on. You're so green. <laughs> Brock Lesnar has officially speaking, retired. Speaking of PEDs. Officially retired from MMA. According to Dana White, he recently uh, has spoken with him and said that he has done. He is retiring. MMA fighting reached out to Lesnar as well. He did say he has intended to retire. Uh, this comes after them trying to get a fight with DC uh, in the works. Now, there are rumors going around about why this is happening. Um, Dave Meltzer says that he believes that Brock Lesnar wanted a flat fee for his next UFC fight due to the new pay-per-view model of it being online only. And he said the number was too high and it was turned down by the UFC. So Brock Lesnar basically said, fuck it, I don't need it. <laughs> I'm out. I'm just done. And we'll, and we'll see this next one next weekend. Uh, this will be the truest pay-per-view number because it's not a special... You know, like last one they threw in, if you buy now, we'll give you three months of this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So this one will probably be the first one where it's like, eh, you're screwed, buy it. <laughs> but if you've already bought it last month, right, you should... You still have to pay for the pay-per-view. Right, true, true. But if you... It was, yeah, that's right. They're giving you some deal. Like if you bought a you, year's worth, you'll get one free or something right, like that. Right, then. right, right. So, so we'll see if anybody actually puts together when it when it's coming up. But they have announced they are working on UFC... What is this? 238. 238? So this is this talking about? This is supposed to go down August 17th in oh, Anaheim. Oh, no, no. 242. 242. UFC 242. Uh, they are working on trying to get in Anaheim August 17th uh, for Steve Mayoich up against Daniel Cormier. This is a fight that uh, Steve has been asking for since his uh, his loss to, to DC. I- I'm excited for Steve May to get this fight, man. This fight should have happened already. Who do Brock Lesnar. Who do you think uh, <laughs> deserves more money in this? There's guys on the, on the card that are actually pissed off at Brock Lesnar for... <clears throat> log jamming the the uh heavyweight division because they're like cool you just held it all up because dc didn't want to fight anybody you can, because you he was can't. waiting to fight you and now no. you're out like i've always said you can't be mad at the fighters because they're just doing what they can to do what they can you know just what i mean to get the money you can't be mad at a guy that's like answers the phones like yeah i'll do it <laughs> right what do you what do you want to say the money no it's like no you know what there's a lot of people out there who might be ahead of me who might be ahead of me <laughs> and uh and might it might deserve the money you're gonna give me yeah could you call them first call if they the turn first. it down then i'll take it then i'll take it i'll feel a lot better about I'm it i'm a good guy mma fighter <laughs> <laughs> i mean is there anybody in any industry that's like that could you imagine that in rock it's like ozzy <laughs> We're wanting you to play this fest in Sacramento. Oh, he can't play anywhere. Dude. No, he I just know, cancels but, but every he's time. like, I don't know though. Have you called? I don't know. Counting Crows. They haven't played in a while. <laughs> Can you put them on stage? You know, does that happen anywhere? I don't know. <laughs> Any industry? Uh, Ronaldo Babalu Soberal, uh, fighter for 16 years. He's been retired for six. He is now coming out and saying that he definitely has symptoms of CTE. Um, he is saying that. It's day to day, but it's definitely he paid the price for to be where he's at. He said that he can't walk a straight line. He's lost sight in his left eye. Um, he has no balance, and, and sometimes he gets it while he's training, and other times it's completely messed up. It's a day to day. But yeah, it, it, pretty crazy that uh, Bob Luce overall um, showing signs of CTE. Now we were talking about this a little bit before the show. These guys put their body on the line. Obviously, it is a combat sport. There is obvious head trauma that is happening in this sport. Now. My opinion, this guy's <clears throat> Soberall's been not around only for in the a sport, long. Not only in the sport, but in training. Yeah. Sparring. These guys, though, I think they're starting to understand that, you know, the older ways of fighting, you know, whether they're getting knocked out in the gym constantly, where they're training when they're hurt, 
when they're fighting when they're hurt, when they're doing things like Val Tudo and, and more bare knuckle and all these kind of things back in the day and it leads into MMA and they keep going, I think these are the guys we're going to see a lot more signs of CTE from. This is my personal opinion. I'm not a fucking doctor. Right. I mean, I'll have a look sometimes, but I'm not a doctor. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, do you think anybody modern era now that's just getting into the sport trains smarter and will have less likelihood of having CTE later? Just by do I mean, just from MMA? Oh, yeah, yeah. We've, we've, we I mean, the sports it, evolved, right? Right, right. But I'm just Training's saying, evolved. are they going to be... Medicine's evolved. Do you think that they'll, they'll, uh, they'll hold titles as long? Do you think they'll be as... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you got guys now that are saying, you know, that they just... They want to retire on top. They did the best they got, you know, right now and now they right. went through and they, they're, they're done because they want to be able to be normal later. I mean, well, but even by his own, his own reckoning, uh, Cormier is fighting longer than he wanted to, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, if you don't know who Babalu is, um, one of the most famous things that he did was he held on to David Heath too long, <laughs> choked him out. David Heath went unconscious. Right. They tried to separate him. He wouldn't let go. This is why he got kicked out of the UFC. Because he pulled a Paul Harris? He just held on. Yeah, but this was a choke and not just a knee. Knee, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, he was kicked out of the UFC, never fought in the UFC again, um, immediately afterwards. Uh, now, there was a crazy story, just a little sidebar on this, that the reason this happened is because two things, the rumors are two things. One, David Heath wore a mugshot of Babalu from getting uh, arrested in Florida at the weigh-ins. Okay. Another one is is that he uh, called That's him, good. That's good play, though. He called him a motherfucker, and apparently this is when Babalu didn't know English very well and literally thought he was going to be fucking his mother, and so he took that to offense. <laughs> uh, both of those are not true. <laughs> Come to find out. Actually, they did an inter- someone did an interview recently with David Heath, and he's like, I never once wore that shirt. If anybody can find a picture of me wearing that shirt, he's like, you can prove me wrong, but I've never once wore the shirt. Uh, there aren't any pictures out there. I've looked long and hard on the internet. <laughs> no for pictures. that picture? For though? that picture. Okay. Other things, yeah. Yeah, yeah what's that? Uh, David Heath did not have it. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. <clears throat> Moving on from there. <laughs> uh, somebody coming back? Doesn't have CTE, at least not yet. Tito Ortiz. And we may have spoke about this last week, but... Do you remember? Maybe. I don't remember. Because they got high. I don't remember. Because they got high. Uh, Tito Ortiz got is going to be fighting in Combates Americas. He Allegedly, will be. According to Tito Ortiz. And it sounds like uh, they already have who he'll be fighting. No. No? He's not, no, they've already turned that down, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Everyone said it was going to be Del Rio, Roberto right. Del Rio, the former MMA slash former WWE guy. No. No, he's like, no, it's not happening. Okay. Yeah, it's not happening. Damn it. Uh, Tito's former partner, though, good old De La Hoya. Oh, I thought you were going to say the porn star lady. <laughs> That's his old partner, too, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, De La Hoya recently went on CBS radio uh, and they asked him about getting into MMA and they asked him about uh, sort of his issue with Dana White. And he said, obviously, I wanted to get my feet wet and then get involved in the MMA business. And we know that Dana White and the UFC have a chokehold on it, uh, but it's just business. Uh, he was a bully to me. And at the end of the day, I have no hard feelings for him. Uh, I think he's been doing a wonderful job at what he does, but I'm going to stay in my lane and do what I do. There's room for both. There's enough apples to pick from the tree so anybody can eat. They've been doing a wonderful job. Um, yeah, he's got a chokehold, says 1FC, says combat <laughs> Boxing and MMA. Says Risen. Compliment says each other. Bellator. He says UFC fans KOTC. Are, are curious to go across <laughs> the street and check out boxing and vice versa. There's enough room for both of us. We can just support each other and continue growing our fan bases. So... Do you think this is De La Hoya saying that he's done with MMA because of his failed experiment uh, with Ortiz and and, and Liddell 3? If it doesn't make dollars, (laughs) it don't make sense. Just say it, De La Hoya. You lost your ass. (laughs) You there? Nobody got paid the way you said they were going to get paid. We've already published the payment numbers. Yeah, they were, they were horrible. <laughs> I think someone literally got tree fitty at the press conference. You didn't know any of the fighters on the card except for your two main guys, Liddell and Ortiz. Four of them were signed two nights before, right? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so, how are you supposed to know people that just showed up four nights ago or two nights ago? <laughs> it's like, hey, this dude slept in my house, bro. Can he fight? We, we'll use him. Yeah, he, he fought once before, right? Yeah, we got him. Does he have his blood work in? <laughs> <laughs> right? California we licenses? Rush it. We'll rush it. No, California licenses is one year. Yeah. So Hold I was on. like, anybody who's got their blood work done, come on down. Uh, moving on from there, former UFC fighter Brandon Schaub, uh, who has been doing multiple podcasts, The Fighter and the Kid with Brian Cohen. 
uh, as well as the King and the Sting. I'm <laughs> pretty much there. You go. You just disintegrated somebody's name. What? Brian Kalen. Brian Kalen. That's what I said, right? No, you said Cohen. Did I say Colin? I said Colin. <laughs> Brian Colin. <laughs> yeah. Well, guess what? That's why that stays zero. Yeah. Um, did you realize <laughs> that's spelled wrong too? Is it? Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. No. What's spelled wrong? Mispronounced. Yeah. There's not two S's. Mispronounced. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's even better. <laughs> even better. <laughs> <laughs> Brent Schaub's going to have his own stand-up comedy special. You'd be surprised on Showtime. Sign a big deal. I Showtime. really wouldn't be. <laughs> well, I'm not surprised. <laughs> You're not surprised? No. Uh, especially, cool, the, especially in the circle that he's been with, yeah. he, with this Callen. Is he's been wanting to do for he, yeah. a while. And he says that uh, Joe and Brian have pushed him to do this, to work on the material, start doing some some gigs out there at uh, in Hollywood, you know, and then hey, eventually get yourself a special. I think he's been good at comedy ever since he told Joe that he believed he could be a champ in his weight division. <laughs> Nothing's funnier than that. Well, anyway, this will be airing on Showtime May 17th at 10 o'clock. Uh, check out Brian's show. Uh, sh- shob, <laughs> shub, Brian shob. shob. You'd be surprised. And and Travis Brone, <laughs> Bronin, and Bronin. That was his last big win, right? He lost to Travis Bronin. <laughs> That's Miss, Mrs. Ra- Mr. Rousey to you, <laughs> Travis Bronin Rousey. <laughs> uh, no, Travis Bonin Rousey. Bonin That's Rousey. Right. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah, trying to get the old lump a dump going. <laughs> uh, PFL. This is your favorite topic. And again, I'm PFL, not surprised. Why aren't you wearing the hat? I'm not surprised. Why are you wearing our hat? What do you mean? I went old. I'm because I still wear Americana and our hat, even though Americana, the Canadian brand, doesn't by, exist anymore. By Fatty. Yeah. I, and what happened, Fatty? You still where around? Where is Fatty? I hope. I, yeah, I hope he's he still, still around. listens. I still have that. that I think he went full time family thing. That I think Beth they. Robinson I think shirt, they dropped I wear some that kids on a regular basis. Yeah, I think they dropped some kids, and then uh, he just went full time daddy. All right. Anyway, back to PFL, Dennis's favorite subject in MMA <laughs> organization. <laughs> Uh, Lewis Taylor is out of the tournament, man. He he's, says that he's, he's got to have his reasons. He's got to have his reasons. He is withdrawing from the, the welterweight tournament, uh, and he says life throws you curveballs, and I will not be competing this season. No, you're supposed to. You're supposed to. That's it. Choke Charlie up. Says. Choke up. Swing lower. If life throws you curveballs, right? Remember, this is the guy who won the million swing dollars lower. at middleweight, and he was supposed to be fighting at welterweight. However, um, from what we've been told, uh, the, this athletic commission would not clear him for the season. That's why he's out. And so he's got something. Something's going on. Probably a blood pressure Something's issue. Going on. Uh, but moving on from there, a little bit more PFL news. Uh, PFL just did their third round Mo money. of crowdsourcing, basically. Or, or not really crowdsourcing, but looking for investments. Um, <laughs> you got Kevin Hart looking for investors. Yeah. You like That's that? the new, instead of Dana White looking for a fight, <laughs> you got Kevin Hart looking for investors. Looking for investors. Well, they got $30 million to continue the PFL. Uh, and one of those investors uh, is Mr. Uh, Jimmy Iovin, right? Iovin? Okay. Uh, he who is the, the co-founder in Beats. Um, yeah, so they raised $30 million. He, he's also going to be with Ted uh, Leonessis and Kevin Hart. Again, $30 million going to <clears throat> uh, PFL to continue doing what they do, man. So they're, they are now at AIG, right? They are too big to fail. I would hope so. Uh, they also just signed a deal with iHeartMedia. PFL signed a deal with iHeartMedia to have uh, on-air hosts talk about the events on all iHeart channels. Um, they're going to have uh, iHeartMedia uh, hosts making appearances at the events. They're also talking about trying to infuse iHeartMedia music into the events. Uh, again, <laughs> again, it go back, go back uh, ten shows ago. And I, I explained to you why you have these investors coming in. It's not it's not Kevin about Hart. right. Well, <laughs> not, it's not just about that. It's a new platform yep. for you to advertise, like right here, music, people. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? There's a lot of th- what people are finding out, and I, we already know this because some pay per views you're just like, let's get with the next fight. Yeah. But there's a lot of dead time, especially when there's a knockout. Yep. And what better way to fill that dead time than yeah. with some iHeart? Yeah. Bullshit. And now our heart media would like to play you the latest hit from Taylor Swift. Yeah, TNA. Let's go. Let's <laughs> let's hope we go back to TNA. You remember that? Remember like when we were growing up? There was like TNA everywhere, nonstop. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> which led to like porn addictions. 
and other things. Uh, fighter Corey Anderson was recently on the Joe Rogan podcast uh, talking about a whole bunch of things. One of the things he talked about was that uh, he had recently booked time at the new performance center the performance institute ufc crap. performance institute in las vegas this is that huge campus thing that they built where they can have all their meetings and they could do you know seminars and they can have all the fighters get together when this they is have the their future of thing. fighting future of fighting you know and they were gonna have anybody could come in and you know the fighters they have a, a world-class workout they have a nutritionist there they have all this shit we've seen all kinds of pictures we posted it non-stop when they were post when they and were, it's uh, all available it to you it's all available to you if you're a fighter except, except for when two people show up uh this is Corey Anderson was saying that I'm getting ready to go to the Performance Institute. I got my bags packed. I got my Uber outside. I'm getting ready to get in the Uber, and I get a call that says, hey, John Jones just came to the gym. He wants to work out, so we're closed. You're not allowed to come in. Ain't and that he's like, what are you talking about? I, you called me two ish, months huh? ago to make sure my schedule was set ahead of time, and I'm trying to get my Uber right now, and now I cannot come. Sorry, John's here. Nothing we can do. He said it's the same thing when Conor McGregor's there. He said, I was there in the summertime. Conor McGregor shows up. They tell everybody, you got to go. Conor's here. You got, everyone's got to leave. Get in your shit. Get out. You're not allowed to be here. Conor, Conor parks his car on the sidewalk. They have a security block, all the stairs, and he, he gets to go have his deal. That's such crap. So he's saying that basically these two guys <clears throat> are getting preferential treatment that doesn't matter. Just on this basis alone, I want these two guys to lose every fight from here on out. <laughs> and if, you're, if you are a true mixed martial arts fan, you too. Doesn't matter that they have a fight week planned or anything like that. Nope. Your schedule doesn't matter. These guys' schedule nope. matter because Dana White's good friends with them. Root against <laughs> John Jones and Dan and uh, Conor McGregor now. Just just, just for this because. basis alone. <laughs> I mean, Conor's already on a losing streak. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> so last year, last September, the UFC bought back its shares from Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi Flash Entertainment. It was a government subsidiary that had invested and had a ten percent stake. In the UFC, they bought that back in 2010. Remember that? Yeah. Okay. So when WME bought the UFC last September, they bought those that 10% back because they wanted to have a more control over their product. I mean, it makes sense, right? I right. Mean, it's something right. That they want to do. Well, they recently released a press release that they are going back to Abu Dhabi, not necessarily selling shares, but they've committed to a five-year commitment of having events in Abu Dhabi. Right. First one is going to be September 7th. What do you think about that? I kind of, uh, and it, it, again, you got to go back to some of our other shows where we've explained where our, the people who invest in an American style of MMA won't agree with how other countries want to handle mm -hmm. setting it up. And we thought it was a bad deal, especially, was it China or Asia? had bought in a big piece that also ended up getting bought back too, right? Uh, I believe so, yeah. So again, it's it's just they they market different. They set things up different. So I, I don't want to say like we knew this is what was going to happen, but yeah. I mean, we talked about they've only had two cards in Abu Dhabi during that nine-year span that they had the 10% anyway. Both of them didn't do well. Right. Um, and again, because the one way... Of the, one of the major ones... Uh, because the way the marketing was handled and, and basically how... And I think that they had well, problems. Well, uh, hold on. No, what, no. What I the, think the problem, too, was how the fighters and everything were set up when they were there, too. Yeah, I, I don't know. Because uh, UFC 112 was the one that Anderson Silva decided not to fight. Right. Remember, he just danced around the entire time. Even Dana White didn't want to give him his belt, even though he knew he won. Like, right. He was like, fuck it. You do it yourself. I'm embarrassed. And then they put on that fight. Um, was it like a fight pat or a fight fight night card? Roy Nelson against Noguera. Um, you know, Big Nog got knocked out right. super early when they said that Dana White said he shouldn't have been fighting anyway. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I do understand the UFC trying to expand constantly in the other markets. They're doing China. They're doing Russia. Abu Dhabi makes sense. I mean, it makes sense to be there. Um, yeah, because there's already grappling tournaments. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, you have the Abu Dhabi Combat Club. Right, right, right. A huge grappling tournament. So um, <clears throat> I'm interested to see uh, what events happen in Abu Dhabi and, again, how the tournament. I mean, they built that whole fucking Ferrari Center for UFC 112 back in the day. And I think they, they do, allegedly then later they do turned some into of, a theme park and right. like all this other stuff, but originally it was for UFC 112. So I think they do some type of Olympic wrestling there too. I'm, sh I'm sure they use the facility for so something. Facility, yeah. Uh, moving on from there, we got uh, Karyoji Horaguchi and Darren Caldwell will be hooking them up one more time. Now, the last time they fought was in Risen, uh, Ryzen Fighting Championships for the Bantamweight title. This was for the vacant Ryzen. 
uh, bantamweight title. Horiguchi won that fight, got the title. Now we're going to have another champion versus champion fight. This time, Darren Caldwell's belt will be on the line at Bellator 222, June 14th. I'm excited for that fight. Oh, yeah. I, I think that's great. We need it's to see this. We need to see this. Champ yeah, we need situation. to see. Uh, and now, then those two need to go fight two guys in the UFC. Uh, this is also <laughs> going to be scheduled and headlined by, of course, we talked about Leota Machida and Shale Sonnen. Um, yeah, we also got Rory McDonald is going to be fighting Nimi and Gracie. We'll get to that uh, here in a moment. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about that. Bellator, uh, what was this, 220? Is that 220? Yep. Bellator 220 happened uh, last week here in San Jose. And uh, on your main card, Phil Davis took out Liam McGreary. Benson Henderson got a split decision over Adam Piccolotti. Real quick one, Cass Bell uh -huh. uh, and Peter Ishigura, they hooked up. Uh, we had interviews from both nice. via Nick. Oh, uh, awesome. Yeah. and uh, Those were both on the Bellator app, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Cass Bell obviously came out, KO, knees and punches. Woo. It was it was a hell of a fight, man. Uh, and then your co-main event, uh, Elima Lee McFarlane defends her belt against Veta Ortega with a doctor stoppage. No stoppage. Does it get any better for Veta? Uh, I don't know. It would just it happened. I mean, it was in the third round. She was obviously taking a beating, right? You know, and this is. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is it's a pretty brutal. You look up that fight. Like her face was covered. That gash is deep. Now uh, McFarland's already offered her a rematch, saying right. because you know let let's finish it, finish it, not have to have a doctor finish it. But still, pretty crazy, man. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't. I, I believe that. Yeah, McFarland was definitely going to be winning this fight, regardless of the cut. Right. Some people regardless. said. Some people said as bad as thirty twenty six, maybe thirty twenty seven. Yeah, I, I would love to see the scores that were yeah. being tallied up for that. And then, of course, Rory McDonald uh, wins, sort of, but doesn't win. Okay, he gets to keep his personally. Belt. He gets to keep his personally belt. just because I'm on Team Fitch. <laughs> I had Fitch winning. Rory McDonald <laughs> keeps his belt with a majority draw. He doesn't technically get a win. Uh, he does get to keep his belt, belt because he didn't lose it, but it was a majority draw against John Fitch. He then made some weird comments in the cage saying that he doesn't have the killer inside, and I don't know if I have the same drive to hurt people anymore. And he was talking about his recent religion and how he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm a walking new life as a Christian now, and I just don't know if this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, you know, I'm, I've been given peace from the pain that I caused other people when I was younger, but now I just don't know if this is what's going to happen. I don't, I don't know what to go with. Hey, everybody, everybody comes to this point in their life. How they deal with it is on them. Uh, I would, I would agree. Yeah, you I would definitely I mean? agree. Um, some people call it midlife crisis, <laughs> but, uh, I don't know if he's at he his midlife. He did say he's not retiring though, because a lot of people immediately <clears throat> took that as, so is the dude retiring? Like what's... What's going on there? Um, I, I don't know. So we, we will see. He does say that he's going to be fighting Amy and Gracie further in the tournament uh, since he won on his side. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see where Rory McDonald goes from here in Bellator. Um, again, strange, strange kind of comments, I guess, that he made. <laughs> he could have just, you know what I mean? He could have had a bad weight cut, and he was still dealing yeah, with maybe. some emotional stuff. Because I'm still, I'm still researching this whole bubble brain and moisture back to your brain. <laughs> And, it, and it, I mean, your emotions are a big thing if you're oh, not yeah. fully hydrated. For sure. You know what I mean? Get uh, a Snickers bar, Rory. <laughs> Get a Snickers <laughs> UFC bar. UFC Fight Night 150 on e -E 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 ESPN plus eight. I don't know. I thought I was glitching out there. So no, I, I I don't. It's that. It's our, it's our new URL. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, I'm so glad they updated their uh, system. UFC Fight Night Jacques Ray versus <laughs> Hermanison happened also over the weekend. Uh, of course, on regular ESPN. ESPN2, ESPN, and uh, ESPN Plus was the main card. Um, you got Diego Lima gets the win over Court McGee. Angela Hill gets the win over Jody Escobar. Okay, Court McGee. How, how many fights has he got left in him, you think? Every time he surprises me. I keep saying it's probably his last fight, and then he wins one, and then he turns around and loses like this. And I'm like, well, it's because Court McGee should stop fighting. I mean, at least, I don't know, maybe just not in the UFC. He can fight elsewhere. Yeah. I, I mean, the UFC's got such a huge roster, man. Like, it's hard. I don't want to see these guys go. You're like, we're talking about guys. No, but I'm just Court, saying. We're talking about guys that Court McGee, like, oh, yeah, I think he's done fighting. But how long has he really been fighting? How long until he, he can't watching? walk a straight line or see out of his left eye? I don't know. Jim Miller against Jason Gonzalez. Angela Hill was not very good, even though she won. She got that win. It doesn't matter. All right. Come on. Jim Miller got the win over Jason Gonzalez. Gilbert Burns over Mike Davis. Carla Esparza gets the win over Verena. She needed Jernoba. it. She and then needed says it. she wants a rematch with uh, Joanna. She wants a rematch. She says she's finally ready. 
Well, she's just been studying Thug Rose's stuff. <laughs> I'm going to be just like Thug Rose. Uh, Augusto Sakai gets the split decision win over Arlovsky. Takashi Sato gets the win. TKO elbows and punches over Ben Saunders. Ben Saunders, where are you at? Ben Saunders looks like he was Come fighting on. the ref afterwards. <laughs> yeah. And then couldn't stand up and then fell down. Like, oh, it was bad for Ben Saunders. It was bad. Uh, Roosevelt Roberts gets the win over Thomas Gifford. He had to. It was Roosevelt's his name. Right? Uh, Corey Sanhagen gets the win over John Lineker in a split decision. Dude, Lineker, another one of those people that's like, on it, on it, on it. Ugh. Ugh. On, on, on it. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Pause. Uh, Glover Tixera, big win over Ian Cotabala. Mike Perry gets the win over Alex Oliveira. Out of nowhere. I'll give it to you, Mike. I did not have you winning this fight, but you did. You did. You did. Uh, what's his face? Got the win over Dmitry <laughs> Smolikov. The hate is strong with this one. The hate is strong, man. First of all, there's a lot of people calling that this call fight was fixed. People it was are saying fixed. fixed. Saying it was fixed. Okay. Saying that this guy... We're not saying it's fixed. No, I'm not saying it's fixed. I'm just saying it looked a little suspect. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. Dana White flat out said, I'm not going to say I love that fight. Uh, you guys know that I've been doing this for 20 years, and we don't set up fights for anybody, but if I was a fan, and maybe some of the media, I would think that it totally was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who the fuck that guy beat in nine fights, but I need to see them, because that was weird. Not to take anything away from Hardy, he came in great shape. I, he doesn't make the fights. It's me and my guys. He came in better shape, and he did what he had to do. He treated that guy like he was supposed to. Well, that's weird. Why would you say that, Dana? Uh, no, I mean, the guy's record's 9-2, and two, and I want to see the guy, nine guys that guy beat uh, because some of them might be actually in this room. That's how weird it was. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, I'm not going to take anything away from Greg. Greg did well. He did what he was supposed to do. Um, TK, what else? Man. Again, this goes back to what, what, what do you want Greg to do? Uh, not be the co-main event. Again, what do you? You know what? There's probably a lot more people yep. that should be on it before me. Yep. You go ahead and call them. Call me back. Yep. <laughs> Especially from him. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Madison gets the surprise win over Ronaldo <clears throat> Jacare Souza in the unanimous decision. Jack the Joker, right? Yeah, Jacare says Why he so did not follow Shania. his game plan. Uh, pretty crazy, man. I, I feel bad for Jacques Array, because Jacques Array is now like the Bisbing, where he's getting all the way up there, he's got a title <laughs> fight lined up, and he's like, Looking yeah, like the Bisbing. I'll take a side fight. Fuck. Damn it. <laughs> Start all over again. Um, but, it's, uh, you know what I mean? Good for Jacques that, that is man. That's good a, for him. That's an MMA gamble. That was awesome. I mean, he, he definitely definitely deserved his win. Yeah, and what's Hammerson supposed to do? Oh, I can't beat this guy, because yeah. he's going on a title Jacques shot. Because Jacques is getting a title shot after me. Yeah. Uh, Moving on from there, we got a bunch of fights to preview. Uh, one of them, if you are into bare knuckle fighting, which seems to be all the rage these days. If you're into bare knuckle, we love these. If you're into bare knuckle boxing, yeah, we've take got the step next. Forward. We got a next step, a whole nother level. level. The UFC on HNL. Fight Pass has signed uh, the WLC, the World Lethwe Championship. You, if you don't know what that is, Brent is going to break it down. I'm going to break you. it down for you right now. They signed them to a two-year deal, so you're going to get to see these fights. We actually had a couple in January and February, but I just want to mention it today because the fight's going to be happening this weekend. And again, a lot of you guys are starting to get into bare knuckle boxing. We love it. On Fight Pass, if you haven't got rid of it yet. If you still have Fight Pass, you get to check this out. So this is going to be Lethwood, which is Burmese bare knuckle boxing. I would like to say it's No pythons, though. There will be no pythons. I like to say Just because it says Burmese. I was totally, I thought it was going to be some snakes too. Some snake too. action, yeah. yeah anyway. I would say it's a little more like kickboxing. So bare knuckle kickboxing. This is the art of the nine limbs. Everything but grappling. Everything but grappling. Explain Relatively. the nine limbs. Nine limbs. So you got fist one, fist two, elbow one, one elbow, elbow two, two, knee one, foot one, knee two, foot two, head. Head. That's nine. Nine limbs. Nine limbs. Uh, and again, this is bare knuckle. You can also say nine points of contact. Yeah, all right, yeah. This is also bare knuckle. Um, originally in traditional rules, fights are only won by knockout. So if you get knocked out, you have a two-minute rest period, and they throw your ass back in there. <laughs> and then if you get knocked out again, you lose You've the other lost. guy wins. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just stay out after yeah, the two-minute rest period. After the two-minute rest period. But However, you will have no honor World if that's Lethwood what you do. Championship has adopted a small rule set that's been modified that allows judges' decision, uh, and it creates more excitement. And we have a definitive winner. There's no draws anymore. Uh, that's the difference between uh, regular uh, traditional Lethwa and World Lethwa Championship. Again, this is going to be on Fight Pass, Cinco de Mayo, May 5th. Check it out. Should be pretty cool, man. Uh, it's, I mean, there's a lot. Like I said, we're in the season. It's going to look real active. <laughs> you know what I mean? For sure. 
they also stay uh, signed David Lu- Luarak, uh, who is the number one. Uh, so what do we got? We got two Americans out of the whole thing. Well, this is this is going to be different. This is oh. going to be one. This is one championship. Oh, that's we one. Also are okay, okay. Uh, which is technically happening today. Uh, so you might be able to get these uh, results now. I don't want to read them to you because I don't want to ruin anything. I'm not a spoiler. Yeah. I'm not one of those assholes. <clears throat> uh, anyway, Yushu Okami um, is on this card, as well as the one Muay Thai Flyweight Championship is also on this uh, as your main event. So uh, you can either check that out right now or go on to the Bleacher Report app, and you can check out one. Uh, moving on from there, we also have Invicta. Invicta is having their... Phoenix Rising Series. This is the one night tournament for the um, first ever sh- woman's style tournament, yep. right? So now, apparently, this is Phoenix Series one. Okay, they're gonna have multiple of these. They're gonna have one for every division. Okay, but this is they're the- starting with the strawweight division. First time ever one mm-hmm. night tournament. tournament for women. For women in H- uh, for yeah. So big big deal here. Uh, you have uh, Alyssa Cron against. Uh, Estelle Esquivel, Kaylin Coran against uh, Suni David Sadurri, uh, Daniel Taylor against Juliana Lima, Janelisa Moradin against Brianna Van Buren, uh, Mizuki Enu against Sharon Jacobson, Amber Brown against Manjat Kolekar, and Kay Hansen against Magdalena Somerov. And again, this is all a tournament, so everybody's going to have to go through. One person will come out as the champion. Do we have anybody standing in the side wing? This is this? also on Fight Pass. Do we have anybody, uh, what are they, standbys? Alternates? Alternates? No? Um, yes. <clears throat> yes. The Alyssa Kron. Yeah, the Alyssa Kron Esquivel and the Amber Brown Manjats Kolekar. Are Both the of those are, are, are the two alternate the two reser- alternates. reserve yeah. bouts. Reserve bouts in case someone gets hurt, they can throw them in there. Okie dokie. So, yeah, check that out. That's also on Fight Pass. That is going down. Is this today? It's today. It's May 3rd. Yep. It's today. Kansas City, Kansas it's at happening. Memorial Hall. Uh, and then going on from there, PFL starts next Thursday. Obviously, it will be before our show, so I'm covering it now. I know it's kind of a week away for you people, uh, but check out PFL. It's Dennis's favorite MMA organization. Uh, this is season one, or excuse me, season two. <laughs> it's actually season three, but people don't want to count it. No, they even say it's season two. Okay. Those right. other ones don't count. Okay. You can't even go against what they I say. I looked it up for you, and they, we went under the name PFL. Ugh. You can't go back and change names and then be like, oh, it's PFL. <laughs> anyway, no, this they is literally the first changed the name one, before they had the event. This is the first one <laughs> that is with their new deal. This is also on ESPN Plus and ESPN2. Yep. So pretty cool if you're on ESPN Plus because you like the UFC. Well, now you can watch PFL. There um, big, big, big ones on this one. We got Kayla Harrison and the women's lightweight. Remember, we have women's lightweight uh, tournament or season going on this year. Uh, Kayla Harrison going against Svetlana Kotova. Sarah Kaufman against Morgan Fryer. I'm also a welterweight champion from last season, the 2018 winner, Magmedov. Magmedov, kind of Karmirbov, will be taking on John Howard. Uh, also, like I said, this will be all on ESPN2. Check it out, man. Welterweight and women's lightweight divisions on display for this event. Right. Moving and like we said, there. it's probably going to end up being Sarah Kaufman against Kayla Harris. At some point. At some point. At some point. Yeah. Moving on from there. <clears throat> this is on the Bellator European Series. You can check this out on the Bellator app. This is the, the main event. is Brett Primus against Tim Weed. Derek Campos also on this card. Uh, check that out on the Bellator app. So lots of fights this weekend. Tons. Tons of fights this weekend. Season well, of MMA. It's going to be a lot of stuff for me to just click through real fast Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> who won, who won, who, who won, won, watch who that won. fight. Who won, who won, who won, who won, who won, won watch, watch that fight. fight. <laughs> exactly. And then, of course, uh, UFC Fight Night 151. One, this, UFC. This may be a fight I watch in real time. On depending ESPN on my Plus weekend. 9. Depending UFC on UFC Ottawa. UFC Fight Night ILL Quinta versus Cowboy. Okie dokie. All the names put together. Hashtag that. Okay. World's largest hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yes, all on the ESPN Plus app make sure you check this out main <laughs> card uh we got walt harris going up against sergi spin spivka spivka spivak 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 brad katona going against merib cub swanson coming back burgos fighting shane burgos Derek brunson against elias the card boy third dude the dude <laughs> aliquinta raging al 
going up against Donald Cowboy Cerrone. A lot of people talking a little trash about Cowboy Cerrone, saying that he looked weak and disheveled. But you got to remember, we've been watching weight. Him, we've been watching him weigh small in. Small and yeah, we've dehydrated. Been, we've been watching him weigh in at 170 lately, people. <laughs> yeah. The 155 just messes with your head. He fought at 155 for a long time. Yeah. It's okay. It's good. It's okay. It's good. Uh, out it's of good. all these fights, good all these fights, all these cards, what are you most excited to see? Uh, uh, Kayla Harrison. Yeah? Yeah. I'm real interested to see Kayla Harrison. Is it just because it's PFL? It's not just because of PFL. <laughs> it's because she's she's a real force to be to be reckoned with. Uh, the Cub Sonson fight. I'm excited to see Cub back. Um, I was kind of about the Derek Brunson fight. Obviously, uh, anytime that Donald Cerrone steps in the ring, and because it's going to be Alaquinta, that's going to be something, you know. But uh-huh. but mostly Kayla Harrison. All right. Oh, and the the whole the not any one fight in Invicta, but I'm just interested to see. How women handle fighting two to three times that in one night. Tournament. Yeah. So, uh, and then of course I'm excited for the Lithuania Championships, man. I think that's awesome. Art of eight nine limbs. <laughs> yeah, like I say, it will look like it's real active. I don't know. I've seen some fights online. I'll show you some if we sign off here and we have time. Yeah. <laughs> it's, okay. It's pretty brutal. I've never uh, watched it, so the way it's been explained to me, I it's gonna be kind of like a street fight. I think. <laughs> <laughs> a little more honor, a little more honor. Okay, a little All more right. honor. All right. Uh, I might become a big fan. You might become a big fan. Like like Schmo, he's probably gonna get an ESPN gig. Do you see that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Told you. No, I was saying. Shit. Uh, make I should sure you, just picked a character and just ran with it. Make sure you head over to shirtskill.com slash SDMMA. Make sure you pick up one of three of our shirts. We have the Pride Style shirt. We have the OG <clears throat> SD shirt. And, of course, you have your Fight Night and Chill. We're working on like shirts. Yeah, we'll we're, put up more shirts yeah. eventually. And we're, just like business cards, I think, are we still? Working? I have those. I just got to get them printed. <laughs> you just They're done. Get, they're done. <laughs> just got to get them to you. One thing we are not good with people, other than putting the show out every Friday, hey, is follow through <laughs> on our side shit. <laughs> It's a lot of stuff, man. I know. I'm trying to get married. Yeah. I got a honeymoon to plan. Oh, I got, got another a... restaurant opening. What do we got a month until we got to be in Vegas? Shh, yeah, I got a bachelor party. Got business cards. Co-wall. I got Co-wall. t-shirts. Are you showing up in Vegas, Co-wall? I got show prep. It's just so much, man. It's so much. Yeah, but it's good to be busy. Makes life go. Yeah. Things are yeah. good. I yeah. can't complain. Yeah, I'd rather be busy than have nothing to Co-wall do. Co-wall better be there. That's yeah. how we're ending the show. Kowal better be there. Yeah. Check out my MMA news. E- even if it's for like five or six hours. My MMA news every day for your MMA news because Long we only do this to once see a week. Donkey show. We only do this once a week. So, and then you yell at Kowal. You go on my MMA news Facebook and you type in "Go to Dodgers Bachelor Party" every single day. I want to see somebody do it. Blake, I know you can do this. Kyle, yeah. I know you could do this. Nick, you too. Somebody. Yeah. I don't want to be the only one doing it to him. <laughs> what would it be? <laughs> Kowal Vegas. Would be the hashtag. Hashtag Kowal in Vegas. Kowal in Vegas. Hashtag. <laughs> We're going to have to put that out. Uh, that's it. Coming to you from the SinCal studios here from the SinCal Industries. You can get all your piercings, tattoos, vinyl stickers, incense now, body jewelry, everything down yeah. here in Modesto. And if you do business online, you do business in plastic, you go with dependablesolutions.net. Look for that. Dependablesolutions.net. Uh, or just find them on the uh, interweb, call them, tell them what kind of business you do. That Usually over the phone, they can kind of review what you do, and they can save you up to 70% off your card business. And if you check like, out Walkie Craft. Yeah, if you like stuff in stainless steel. Etsy, or you, right? you, Etsy.com slash Walkie Craft. Et, yeah, Etsy.com. Uh, you could just put Walkie Craft, uh, hashtag Walkie Craft, and it pretty much shows the last 10 things he's put out. Yeah, man the guy never yeah, stops cool. working. He's like the James Brown of the stainless steel industry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's it. That's your show for this week. Is it? Have a good night. See you in the fight. <laughs>